Welcome to Brooklyn Boxing. I'm Richie Rich. I'm joined today by Andre Rozier. How you doing, Andre? Good morning, Rich. How are you? So, Andre, you're a world-renowned trainer. You're the owner, founder, of, and CEO of Havoc Boxing. And, you know, you, you're known in the community and the boxing circles as, you know, a big name in the game. So tell us a little bit, and tell the folks out there, about what it means for these fighters and what separates them being from Brooklyn. You know what I'm saying? What, what, what gives them that hunger, that drive? Well, as we do know, Brooklyn is a borough of rough and tough, hardcore neighborhoods. You have Brownsville, Bed-Stuy, East New York, and the kids that come from these areas, uh, they're built from a different creed and cut of cloth. And we are looking in these areas to cultivate that attitude because when you apply talent to that attitude, you usually end up with, with champions and monsters. Okay. Is there any, anybody in particular that you're working with that, you know, you want to work with, but maybe you could let the people out here know, you know, some of the names that you work with? Sure. I'll start from the top. Age appropriate. Uh, Curtis Stevens, Daniel Jacobs, Saddam Ali. Those are my three core professionals at the moment. And they are the ones who I'm expecting to become world champions. Okay. And, like, when did you start working with these guys? Like, was it, like, out of nowhere or did you, you know, groom them from childhood? Like, where, where does it start? Where do you, where does, you know, for a good professional fighter, like, where does it start? Is it just athletics or is it, you know, proper training, you know, from being a young kid? Well, whenever you start a young man at an early age in any sport, you get the chance to teach them correctly and guide them and they mature with that sport. So by the time they are men, they do know exactly what they are going to do in the sport they are participating in. I myself have started with all of my guys at very, very early ages. And it's just not a one man show. Let me advise on that. There's always help in building athletes. For instance, with our team, you have Gary Stark Sr., you have Leonard Wilson, you have Victor Roundtree, uh, just to name a few that come together and we gel and we create these young athletes that happen to become champions. That's very interesting because you got a lot of kids that's out there, they're out there on the corners, you know what I'm saying, they're doing their things and, you know, they consider themselves rough and tough. But as soon as they get in the gym, it's like one round of hitting the punching bags and, you know, they're, they're out of steam. And then they realize, you know what I'm saying, it's not as easy as it seems. Everybody thinks they can knuckle up. You know what I'm saying? They fight 10 seconds on the street and then they come into the gym and they can barely last a round. So what do you got to tell the kids out there that, you know, about the discipline it takes to be, you know, in boxing, you know, the hard work ethic and, you know, the training regimen that, that comes along with it. It's not an easy sport. No, not by any long shot. Boxing is one of the most rigorous and discipline demanding sports that we have. And when young athletes or even young kids come into the gym and they might think that in the streets, I am the man, I, I, can, I'm, I can beat anyone, I can do anything. And they get in that ring for one minute and throw some punches and find out that their heart and their lungs don't cooperate with what their brain is telling them. It's a different story. So I tell them that discipline in anything in life is important. But when you are working and you want to be an, an athlete, if you want to be a boxer, you have to give 100%. And training is is foremost and utmost the beginning of it all. That's where the discipline starts. Okay, so for a young kid that, that comes into the gym, obviously you're gonna start them out in the amateur ranks. And how important is that in the development of a fighter? Oh, as with anything else, amateur boxing is the foundation of any great fighter. Very rarely do you find an athlete who can enter the professional realm with no amateur experience and be successful. I said rarely, once in a blue moon it might happen, but when you have a young man who has been boxing since the age of five 
and he goes through the amateur ranking and the years of development by the time he chooses or wants to become a professional if he has anywhere from 100 to 200 fights it's very difficult for this man to be beat by someone who doesn't know or who does doesn't have the same experience so tell us a little bit about havoc boxing havoc boxing gear is a company that was formed in 1996 and actually it, it was formed by accident to tell you the truth i'll tell you the story real quickly uh, I had a fighter, his name is Monty Barrett. He, he's a heavyweight contender. And uh, he came to the gym and he said he wanted to learn to box and, and I was training him. So his aunt made boxing trunks for him. And they were, they were nice, but they were his. So they were special. That's all that counted at that point in time. So I had these trunks and I took them to my home and they were in the closet and the shelf in the closet fell and ripped the trunks. Mm. So I was like, oh man, this kid is gonna have a heart attack. Mm. Those were his favorite trunks. So I said, let me tell him. But he didn't know that I was a, an accomplished tailor. So I said, I'm gonna tell him, I'm gonna make him some trunks. So we were at the gym, I said, Monty, I have good news and bad news. What do you want first? He said, give me the bad news. I said, your trunks, the ones your aunt made for you, were ripped in the closet. They're destroyed, they're done. And he was so upset. Oh man, how did that? I said, no, don't worry though. I'm gonna make you some trunks. He went from angry to hysterically laughing in the same second. So I asked him, what are you laughing about? What do you mean gonna make me some trunks? You don't know how to make trunks, you don't know how to sew. I said, yeah, I can sew, I'm a tailor. He started laughing even harder. So. I said, let me get this thing together. I went down in my grandmother's basement. I pulled out the sewing machine that she had given me uh, about 10 years ago. I oiled it up, I ran it. And I said, let me make these trunks. And I made the first set of Havoc boxing trunks. And that's where it really started. That's very interesting. Havoc now is you know, on its way up to being up there amongst some of the biggest names. Now we're going to come back and we're going to talk a little bit more with Andre Rozier. Stick around. This is Brooklyn Boxing. All right, welcome back to Brooklyn Boxing. Richie Rich here with Andre Rozier. And we were talking earlier, Andre, about uh, your Havoc boxing gear line. So tell us a little bit more about that, like where people could check it out, you know, you know where it's going. Okay, well, basically at this point in time, we're morphing from actual boxing gear into athletic wear. I have a fantastic team under me. Uh, I refer to them in a family sense as my brothers. I have an older brother, Randall Ramirez. I have two younger brothers, uh, Robert Diaz and Ray Campbell. And we're, we've teamed up to bring the clothing line to its next, next level and hopefully to worldwide prominence. So is there any big names out there that are wearing this, like obviously I know I'm a big boxing fan, I follow the game, but for some of the guys out there, like tell us who's, who's uh, clients of? Oh, that's a very long it's list. It's a long list, yeah, but I'll, we can start from the, from the top we'll of the food chain. We'll start at the top. Uh, right now, Danny Garcia, uh, one of my favorite fighters, uh, Adrian Broner, uh, all of my guys, Curtis Stevens, Daniel Jacobs, Saddam Ali, uh, Lamar Russ, uh, the list goes on Andre and on. Andre Berto. Andre Berto. Uh, you might have to help me with my list. <laughs> <laughs> the list goes on and on. But I'm happy to say that I can really express the fact that so many of these young, accomplished athletes are wearing the gear. Yeah, it's good to see that. Especially, you know, it's, it's local. You know what I'm saying? Even though New York is a big city, it's a big market. 
you know, being that, you know, you're from, from around the way for me, it's good to see people that I know who's doing big things, you know, and to, you know, even play a small part in that. Well, if, to me, my thing is trying my best to give the highest quality product possible. I'm not so much worried about quantity. It's the quality of it. And for a company that possesses so few to be deemed so large is an accomplishment in itself. It is. And congratulations on Thank that. Thank you very much. I appreciate so it. So back to the boxing, you know, the athletes themselves. Who do you, you know, enjoy watching? You mentioned Danny Garcia, who's an exciting fighter. Who, who else do you, do you uh, you know, enjoy watching? Well, that's a, that's a really long list also. Um, I like action fights. Um, I love when guys come in and put their shields on their backs and get ready to rock and roll. Mm -hmm. um, I love the way Adrian fights because he brings technical prowess with power and aggression, and I love that. But there's nothing like that old neighborhood brawl when two guys really go at it and the, may the best man win because I want it more than he does. Okay. So as far as like historically speaking, like you would be more of like a Tyson compared to Ali. Well, that that's a that's actually a toss up. Um, but I when Tyson was Tyson, there was no more exciting athlete on the planet. I I go back to the old school. I, I love Marvin Hagler. He was like a blue collar fighter. He brought it. Any way he had to beat you, he did it. Um, I enjoyed the, the power and the tenacity of uh, Thomas Hearns. Sugar Ray Robinson from the old tapes was a fantastic technician with explosive power. Yeah. Uh, I mean, Joe Lewis, the Brown Bomber, he was a sharpshooter. And back in the days, I mean, his left hook was a thing of brilliance. So, I mean, the list goes on and on. All right, here's an here's a, a interesting question for you. If we keep it just on Brooklyn and, you know, with the great, you know, fighters that, that come from Brooklyn, if you were to rate the number one fighter to come out of Brooklyn, who would that be? It would have to be Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson. Just for the excitement that he brought? For the excitement, for the personality that he was. And what he represent, Like, and he really represent the borough. Yes, I mean, he, he was that that thing in Brownsville. Brownsville is a rough and tough and hardcore place, and that's what Mike was in the ring. I mean, you have, we have a long list of athletes from just that neighborhood. I'll, I'll run through it really quickly. Uh, Eddie Mustafa Muhammad, a very dear friend of mine, fantastic light heavyweight champion. Shannon Briggs, he trained at the same gym. We worked together. Riddick Bowe, bed -Stuy Boxing, fantastic fighter. Uh, Zab Judah, getting ready to fight Danny Garcia at the Barclays Center. I kind of got my money on Zab on that fight. It's going to be a tough fight. It's really going to be a tough fight. And I know both of them. I know them nearly and dearly, so my thing is I'm a neutral, <laughs> I'm a neutral viewer. Let's just say I'd like to see Zab win that fight. Well, okay, very cool. I mean, I have to sit there and, and say I hope that neither one gets hurt. Exactly. May course. the best man win. Yeah. Um, and then the new school. Um, Danny. Danny Jacobs, Curtis Stevens. Um, these are young men who have the talent to become world champions and be added to that list, that long list from that neighborhood. And then you have Mark Breland and Paulie Malignaggi. I mean, the list goes on and on. Brooklyn is a hotbed and a strong borough for representation in professional boxing and world champions. Yeah, and now we got the Barkley Arena. We brought in the big time promoters. We got Golden Boy. You know, let alone we have made events, though they're, they're not Brooklyn-based. Mm -hmm. They're signing a lot of guys. That, they signed uh, your nephew, mm -hmm. Curtis Stevens. Yes, they did. So what do, you, what do you think, like, you know, the future is for Brooklyn now that we got this? I mean, obviously, it's a bright future. Very bright. Anytime we have a new avenue, a new forum 
for boxing to develop is a good thing. I don't care if it was the community center at the Catholic Church. Mm -hmm. If we can get some boxing going on there, let's go. All right. But this Barclays um, involvement with professional boxing is so big, it's not even funny. Does it need to be tweaked? Yes, it does. We might talk about that later. But it's here now, and that's the good thing. All right. We got more to talk with with Andre Rozier. We're going to be right back. This is Brooklyn Boxing. Stay tuned. You see a calmer, more composed version of Stevens. I've never seen a Stevens come out and uh, look to set up his jab like he's doing right here. He's notoriously a power puncher. Very big left hook and uh, looks to set up power punches, but he's coming out nice and composed. He knows he's got a 10 rounds, uh, 10 rounds to work with. He talked about that loss to Brinkley. Totally. Wow, it's over right there. He knocks him down. Short left hook. He we just talked know. about that punch. Are they going to continue with this fight? They are. He's it a finisher. He's a finisher, Stephen. Stevens, Stevens is himself. going after him now. Ayala in trouble here in the first. And Stevens has it down again. It's it over. is over now. That is it. Curtis Stevens making quick work of Alvin Ayala. All right, we're back. We're talking here with Andre Rozier. And Andre, now we talked earlier about some of the big names that you're training. We got Danny Jacobs, you got Curtis Stevens, you got Saddam Ali. Those are the cream of the earth crop that you got right now. And, you know, I'm big fans of all three of them. So we got Curtis Stevens. He's fighting next. You want to right. say a little bit about that? Yes, Curtis is fighting on April 20th at Madison Square Garden. Uh, his opponent is Derek Finley, a young man who has been in with some of the best at super middleweight and middleweight. Andre Ward, Andre Durrell. Um, he hasn't officially been stopped in a bout. Yet. 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 <laughs> That's the important word, yet. But um, I'm looking forward to Curtis performing, doing what he does well. At 160, Curtis seems to be unstoppable. So this will be a good test for him to see if he's going to rise to the occasion and put Finley away. So that's what we're working on now. I seen Curtis's last fight. It was on NBC. Yes. And this next fight is also going to be on NBC. It's going to be on NBC Channel 4. It Channel won't be on the Sports Channel. It'll be viewed by everyone who doesn't have cable and who does have cable. Basically all of America. <laughs> all of America, yes. So this is a big stage. Very big stage. Very big stage. His last performance, I was very impressed. You know, He came out with a good, stiff, hard jab. Mm -hmm. And he landed a picture perfect left hook, and it was it was like a thing of beauty for for boxer peoples. He took the guy out, and he took him out cold. I mean, it was just it was a good fight for him. Yes, it was. And so he's he's kind of on a hot streak. Curtis decided that he wanted to get down to 160, and we had spoken about it uh, many times before. He took the initiative, he knuckled down, and he brought his A game to the table. He had one bout at 162, and then we had the Ayala fight. He wanted the Ayala fight. And we always talked about boxing against Ayala, but this was the time. And even through training, I had my worries because I'm, I am his uncle. I separate training and, and, and the family aspect as much as I can. Which is important. Yes, it is. But he's still my nephew. And I still love him. So I was worried. Like, we haven't had a lot of work. Ayala's been busy. Now, what could go on? I wasn't worried about Ayala hurting him. But skipping around, sticking, moving, causing problems, maybe edging out a decision in his own hometown. Exactly. He quelled that whole entire issue for me by going out there and countering off the block and starching him with a big left hook and then finishing him up. I was really proud of him that night. Okay, that's April 20th. Yes. On NBC. Yes. After that, a week later, we got Danny Jacobs. A week later. I'm busy, Rich. I'm busy. Making that money. Uh, Danny Jacobs. Uh, I call Danny my son. Everybody knows that. And uh, he's fighting uh, Billy Lyle. And what we're doing with Danny is we're trying to bring him down to 154 because we're going after that title that Ishe Smith has. And Danny 
he's a big middleweight as it is. If we get him down to 64, I mean, if we get him down to 54, from um, he's gradually been dropping two pounds per, and he's feeling really good. He's feeling strong and capable. He'll be the junior middleweight champion of the world yeah. by the end of the year. Right, so it's inevitable that he's going to win the world title. I mean, it's pretty much, you know, in the bag. I do expect that to be the case. Uh, we're grooming all of our young athletes to be world champions. Uh, I thank the dear Lord to be blessed with the talent that has been placed in our team's hand. And uh, it's up to us to make sure they reach fruition and become world champions. Okay, now Danny also overcame some hard obstacles, which in the future episodes of this show, which we're going to transfer the reins to you, which, you know, we're going to have you hosting the show, which we're going to be naming Havoc Boxing. Havoc Boxing is coming at you. Get ready for hard it. Hard and clear. It's the hurt business. So we're going to have Danny on the show, and you're going to get more into it, but tell us a little bit, like, he overcame some obstacles, you know what I'm saying? Yes, it, it was a very, very trying and scary time in all our lives when we found out that Danny had spinal cancer. And um, we didn't know if we were going to lose him or not. And people don't realize how important and how serious it is until you're facing it head on. And when Danny first was diagnosed and then he had surgery, we went to the hospital to see him. He was in a wheelchair. He couldn't walk. But he was in a great spirits. He was up. He was laughing. And it sort of took the edge away from worrying anymore. And he said, no, don't worry. I'm going to get up. I'm coming to the gym. I'm going to work. So I said, I'll be happy just to see him get up and, and walk around. And then he started moving slowly. And I remember the first day he came back to the gym. He had this big back brace that was wrapped around his chest. And he crept down the stairs, you could say, one step at a time, very slowly. And he went to the mirror, started shadow boxing, slow as an old man in mud, but he did it. It's that spirit, the fighting yes, spirit. Yes, yes. And he came back again and again. And then he was trying to run, and it hurt, but he kept trying and kept trying. And he rose to the occasion. That's so why I love the kid. I mean, sometimes they all could be prima donnas. But they're my prima donnas, right. so it doesn't make a difference. But he rose to the occasion, and here we are in his third fight since actually having surgery. And he's 2-0 and with two knockouts on his return. And so he's fighting again on the 27th of April at the Barclays Center. On the Danny Garcia, Zab Judah on the Exactly. Exactly. We, we have the best of all worlds going on there. And uh, he's the first television fight on Showtime. And his opponent's Billy Lyle. And we're going to be ready. And Danny is going to put together a fantastic performance and hopefully get his opponent out of there, which is the way I like it. I don't like decisions. I like knockouts. Right. Get these guys out of here. Finish your job. We don't get paid overtime. Yeah. It's time to go. Put the butts in the seats. That's right. Exactly. And finally, we got the 2008 Olympic Olympian, Saddam Ali. Tell us a little bit about you know, what's, what's going on with his career. Saddam Ali, he is 16 and 0 with 10 knockouts. Um, right now, Saddam is his own promoter, and it's tough to promote yourself. It's tough, but he's made some strides. But right now, it's time for him to be aligned with someone that can help him get to the next level because he's a fantastic talent, and he's had some periods of times when he didn't box when he should be, so now it's time for us to pick it up so he can realize his potential and his destiny of being a world champion. Right. And I think that when everything gets worked out, he will get there. So I just, me, myself, I don't like delays, and uh, I don't want to see him delayed because time waits for no one. But, you know, we take it one step at a time. Right. Now, again, we're going to be pretty soon producing a new show, which you're going to be hosting, Thank Havoc you. Boxing. And it's going to be focusing on the community, Brooklyn, bringing in Brooklyn fighters, the guys you train, not only the big names, but also guys who put the blood, sweat, and tears, pros and amateurs, trainers and promoters, who, who you may have never heard before, but we're going to give them a chance to shine, you know what I'm saying? Give this an outlet, not only for you know the big names, but also for 
for guys that's just been working in the industry. This is a show for the community, for the friends and families of the fighters. You know, I love boxing. I'm a big fan. And obviously you are too. You know, you're in the game. It's in our blood. There's always an alpha to an omega. You have a beginning and you have a middle and an end. We want to find out how it starts. How does a world champion begin? And what happens in the middle of it? So that's what we're going to base the show on. We'll get out there. A lot of the athletes that participate in boxing, professional and amateur, are good friends of mine. Uh, I'm, I'm referred to in most boxing circles as Uncle, Uncle Dre. Jay. And um, Uncle Dre is going to be out there hitting the asphalt, getting in the gyms. I mean, you, as you know, Richie, as me being your trainer, that we get out there and we get our grind on. We will be grinding for the Havoc Boxing Show. All right. Well, that's it for now. Stay tuned. We're going to have a lot more coming. Dre, thank you, man. Anytime. Havoc Boxing. Havoc we boxing. are in the hurt business.